Don. I am so excited to meet you. I'm Kristen Maldonado from Pop Culture Planet. Hi, I and I well, I follow your tweets and everything. Oh, thank I you. I think you. congratulations are in order recently for you, oh, right? Thank you. Yeah, I recently became a member of Critics Choice. Yes, thank yes. You. Congratulations. Well, it's great to officially meet you in person. I know, you know, since we follow each other on Twitter, obviously. I'm a big Chucky fan. We got our Chuckies, both of us. Love it. Love it. <laughs> and, you know, I got to start with, it's just so incredible how after 35 years, you still have so many incredible creative ideas around Chucky. How do you keep things fresh? Well, I, you know, spend a lot of time thinking about Chucky. I spent a lot of time thinking about Chucky over the last 40 years. Um, so I like I actually feel fortunate that I have an outlet, <laughs> you know, for the ideas because the ideas keep, you know, I, I just really love the character. Um, and I think I think I speak for also, you know, everyone on the on the show. I mean, I think we all really enjoy the character and you know, coming up with crazy new shit for him to do. Absolutely. So you're just like really happy that we have an outlet for, you know, actually realizing it. Oh, I love that. So so what inspired you for this season to bring Chucky to the White House? Well, I've been thinking for a long time, actually, about doing something about the haunted White House. It's just a, I've been interested in the lore that actually exists surrounding the White House and supposed ghost sightings and such that, you know, have been taken seriously at certain times, including during and most famously during the Lincoln administration, um, where they actually, you know, held a seance in the White House, um, and we do that too. Um, you haven't seen it yet, but it's coming. Um, so that, so just separate from Chucky, it's just something I've been doing research on over the years and thinking about doing something with. And then it occurred to me that it would be a really interesting place to place Chucky. And at the same time, expand our supernatural mythology and sort of, you know, explore different aspects of that of that mythology. I mean, Chucky, in a way, is a ghost. You know, in, in actually the very first scene of episode one, Henry and his mom sort of debate this about what is a ghost exactly? It's a spirit. It's, you know, a thing that's hovering around after you die. Um and so what if it turned out that Chucky was in a place where he wasn't the only one? Um, you know, I thought that that was, uh, you know, an interesting new wrinkle to explore. And it also, for the three teenage protagonists, it represents a unique challenge for them. Because, you know, by now, they've dealt with Chucky for three years. They, you know, they just want to kill him. So we needed to create a an interesting obstacle and challenge toward in between them and their goal of getting to Chucky. So putting him in the most secure house in the world seemed like a, a fun idea. Oh my gosh, it is. I'm like, is something going to happen where eventually Chucky could become the president and take <laughs> over and have so much power over the whole world? That would be so incredible. So mm -hmm. I, I've been loving this new season. <laughs> and you. You you mentioned the 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 spirits, the ghosts, the supernatural elements, and I feel like we're also getting so much more lore about Dambala. Um, yes. And I would love to hear a little bit more about that perspective. I know you've also teased in the past that like this upcoming part two is going to have a little bit more like surrealism in it that's kind of connected to Dumbala. So I'd love to just hear more about that lore. It's all about expanding the mythology, and you know once you get into the realm of doing a TV show. Um, you know, it's great, as I said earlier, it's great to have the opportunity to realize a whole different, you know, bunch of different ideas. But at the same time, you know, you have to you have to keep it fresh and you have to like you, you have to expand it beyond Chucky, just like saying, fuck you and <laughs> stabbing someone. It has to be about something. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, again, I thought that using Dumbala as a context through which to explore this new facet of Chucky's character because now he's faced with aging and and obsolescence and being replaced in culture and being forgotten and what does that mean and all just all of these sort of existential questions 
that I think it, it's sort of amusing and interesting and hopefully a little, a little surprising to challenge Chucky with. Um, you know, it's something that I've often tried to do in, in the various movies as well as, you know, we've gotten to know Chucky's love life and his family life and what his values are. You know, so we've learned a lot about him as a, you know, for a slasher villain, um, more than most, I would argue. So um, we want to keep expanding on that. And so we always think of the characters first and what might be a new, a new dimension to explore. And then we try to find the, you know, the story that will help accommodate that. Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and if you want to talk more TV and movies with me outside of the comments section, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash kmaldo. If you like this one, you can check out more of my videos right over here. See ya!